that's me and my dad counting 7650 screws and this video is an attempt to fix that. In the mill screws and rings. This is the set of screws, 14 bucks in total, one bag of B-rings and the rest of screws and 255 screws per one set. This is the set that you need if you want to build an indie mill, my open source CNC machine that I designed a while ago and that I'm selling the parts for on my website. To create every single one of these sets I had to personally count every single screw together with my dad, put them in the bags and then put all the bags in the envelope. And now it's time to finally automate this process and make it a lot easier and hopefully quicker. I've worked on quite a few projects in my life and I found that designing it on a paper starting that way is just the easiest and the most natural thing for me and then I can move on to the cut design and that thing that you see right now is the final version of this screw counting machine. There was a lot of different prototypes, a lot of different designs that I tried but this is the final thing. Simultaneously while designing I started printing all the parts on my good old Ender Free 3D printer which I'm using still for like most of my projects. And I also decided to prototype the maximum dimensions of the PCB, that's where the mechanical design blends with electric design and PCB design. So here I'm just measuring what is the biggest PCB that I can fit in here. And I even made a very simple cardboard prototype of the max dimensions of the PCB to verify if I can fit in here the Raspberry Pi Pico, the display and the buttons. And once that was verified, it was time to start working on the PCB. I made a prototype on a breadboard because first thing, it's just fun to do. And second thing, it's always good to verify if your design and your approach is good. And in this case, it was, I was able to easily drive a seven segment display with Raspberry Pi Pico. And then I created a KiCad schematic and also the PCB layout. The 3D model that you will see right there is not 100% accurate, but it's always nice to see the PCB in 3D before making it. And here, once again, a verification step just to see if every component will fit and the footprints are okay. And here I'm choosing the PCB laminate that is the easiest to cut. I'm just cutting it with a knife and then breaking it. And that works really well. I'm not going to like thermal transfer the PCB. I'm going to mill it on a CNC machine. And that's what you see right now. I always start with drilling all the holes and then I'm doing like the heat map, measuring the differences in height of the PCB because there are always some differences. And then you can start machining uh, the actual copper traces on the PCB. For that, I'm using the software called Flatcam and it is not perfect, but after making a few PCBs, I got quite used to it and it works well. And unfortunately, after milling, there's always some things to clean. So here I'm doing that with a microscope. And then the easiest step is just to place all the components and solder them. And as you see, some holes are a bit bigger than they were before, so I drilled out some of them, because here I will place screws. Someone once told me that assembly is as easy as good as your CAD design, and I'm really taking a lot of care when I'm designing in CAD, but assembly is never easy. Oh my god, so that was just the very first test of the mechanism and we can already see plenty of flaws in the design and those are pretty obvious. The wheel is rotating way too fast and that's even on a very low voltage, so that's a big problem. And also the drum, the part that holds the screws is just way too small and the screws are falling out. Also none of the screws gets in the hole and that's first thing the design of the hole is not really that great and second it is rotating too fast. So we have to change that. So that's the gearing I used, it's almost one to one and yes I know that mechanically using gears on shafts like this is not the best idea but I printed new gear uh, with way bigger reduction so that should help with the speed. Because of the new gearing I had to change slightly the position of the motor but because I don't like wasting plastic for the prototypes I printed a stencil and drilled the holes by hand. Unfortunately later I had to print the drum part again because I changed some other things in the design but for this prototype it worked great and as you can see right now 
The speed is okay. The screws are loading into the holes, so that's the good news. Some of the holes still require sanding or small redesign, but most of them work fine. Another flaw that I found later was that because I used small bearing, also the shaft was pretty small and it was easy to break. It was just weak, it wasn't working for this project. I redesigned the drum, pretended again, I used a different bearing, I have a different bearing holder and here I am assembling all of that. The shaft is not only bigger, I also use a slightly different approach to the design and now I'm using a few screws to attach the gear to the shaft, there is just no way that this thing breaks right now. To design the whole machine, I used 3D printed parts and plywood parts that I cut on the laser, the plywood is 3mm thick, really easy to buy, easy to cut, perfect for DIY projects. This is the slide I wanted to use in this project for pretty much no reason and here are the sensors, a crucial part for this project to detect the screws. And the sensors, that was problematic and I think we need a chapter for that. This is the slide. I wanted to mount it here in the back of the machine so that the screws fall out here in the front through this hole and I can also control the machine here with the buttons. It was like a pretty good idea, it wasn't working because of the angle right there, because of the big gear in the back, there was kind of a lot of problems with the system. Uh, so I decided that okay, I'm gonna like collect the screws here in the back and here on the top I wanted to mount the sensors, but the sensors, that was a real problem in this project. That's how it started, I have two line sensors with an LED and a phototransistor and as you can see it can detect the screw, but when you drop the screw it just doesn't work. My second idea was to use a copper plate with wavy traces very similar to a rain sensor and that way it takes the screws, so I grabbed the tools, I grabbed a piece of copper to create a prototype. After checking with a multimeter if it works, I found that it, it really wasn't working, it wasn't even close to working fine, but I have a rain sensor, so why not to use that in the first place, like what's the point of making that on my own? I adjusted the sensitivity to like the lowest value possible and I started testing it with just a screw and you can see the red LED blinking in the back, but it is blinking only sometimes and definitely not always when I drop the screw and that is a big problem, this sensor is not reliable. So then my thinking was like, well maybe the sensor is just super smooth and the screw is not really touching on the traces of the PCB, so how about adding some solder on the traces to like make it very rough so that the screw has like a, a bigger area of contact with the sensor. Here I'm just hopelessly testing it to see if there is like any difference, there wasn't, zero difference, like it is not working at all still, so with that we can move on to the final solution. At this point of the video you may be thinking, why haven't you even thought about using a laser sensor, it's so obvious, and yes of course it was, but I had no laser at all. And then in the end I thought, well, maybe I don't have a laser, but I have LEDs and a photoresistor, with that I can build some kind of an optical sensor that maybe it's not a laser, but should work, and this is the prototype. It's an LED, it's a photoresistor on the other side, the one I used in my watering and data collection system that I built some time ago. I just with hot glue attached it to a 3D printed part and started testing it out. I built a circuit that I have right here on a breadboard to prototype it more and choose a better resistor for the photoresistor and I connected that to the oscilloscope and I can see the voltage on this voltage divider when I drop the screw. When the biggest problem of the project was solved, it was time to take care of the little details like the buttons and a tunnel for an LED display and of course some cable management. Here is my program, <laughs> very simple, two lines of code, it's basically detecting the screw and then counting up and printing it here on the monitor. As for now, the screw counting machine is not controlled with the PCB but with my lab band power supply that I have there, so I will just turn it on.
That was a very simple script used just for testing and later I developed it completely and there would be not really a lot to say about programming, it was simple, but just like anyone else on YouTube I decided to use ChatGPT in this project and see how it works. So I told ChatGPT to write a code for 7 segment display and that's the result. Not really that impressive, something is definitely wrong here. Fortunately, the errors were quite easy to spot and fix. And basically a few minutes later I had a completely working code for a 7 segment display. Well, maybe it's not as revolutionary as some people think, but indeed it is helpful in some cases. And here is this crew counting machine. It is ready, it is working and I will show you how. The interface is super simple, just three buttons the display and a buzzer. With this button you can decrease the amount of screws to count and with this one you can increase it, let's set it to 20 and now let's start counting. And here I should have 20 screws, so let's count it. We have 3, 6, 9, 10, 3 and 10, exactly. But now the question is, how reliable is this machine? Can this really count a lot of screws and can it count it reliably? So to find out, I will have to count plenty of screws, not only with the machine, but also with my hands and then compare the results and see how often the machine is wrong, because it probably will be wrong sometimes. And ten. Is this machine production ready? Well, unfortunately not. The error rate is plus minus 5%, so out of 100 counted screws, there might be 105 or 95 screws, so it is not really that useful for production. At this point, I think I can call this machine an, a collaborative machine, where it counts, but I have to verify it, which is obviously not that useful, but it's a good start. It's a nice prototype of a machine that I want to build in the future, and I had a lot of fun developing it. I hope you had a lot of fun watching this video and you learned something. This machine is open source, so you can find more info if you want to build it in the description. If you would like to support my work, you can do it on industry.cc. There is a store with parts for my projects where you can buy them. And you can also support my work on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. Happy making. Bye.